Thanks and welcome to another edition of Forwarding WordCamp Santa Carita. I'm joined by the awesome Joseph Dixon. Welcome. Hi, Joseph Dixon here. <laughs> All right. So to me, um, each of these uh, sessions starts with how I met you. And I remember mm -hmm. um, I've seen you around at various work camps. I think I saw you speak at Riverside, either the first or the second one, or at Orange County. Mm -hmm. We were both on the same docket at work camp Los Angeles. And I remember um, I had this hat that um, uh, our, the printer that's doing all the work for our work camp did for me. And you commented on it. And we became Twitter friends ever since then. And we always go back and forth because you're very active on Twitter. Why don't you first talk about what you're going to present at WordCamp Santa Clarita, let the people know that what they're going to get when they come to your session. Sure. So uh, my session is going to be about upgrading the, uh, the classic theme uh, Kubrick for Gutenberg. That theme hasn't received an update since 2010. So I thought it would be a good, uh, good example to take something that's long past tense and um, try to apply Gutenberg blocks to it. And I was surprised it was uh, difficult, but not insane. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, the idea is I wanted to pr uh, show people that you can improve the, uh, the block editor workflow for your classic themes without having to be 100% Gutenberg compatible. Oh, awesome. That sounds like yeah. a, a great topic. And for those that don't know about the history of Kubrick, Talk a little bit about, is that an automatic theme or was it developed by someone specific? Talk a little bit about that. Uh, Kubrick was the first default theme and it was uh, released with WordPress 1.2 and continued as a WordPress theme until 2.9 when, um, when they released, uh, when WordPress released WordPress 3.0, they started going into the default theme series of like 2010, 2011, 2012, and each year after that had a new theme to uh, exhibit the new features in WordPress core that were available, whether it was template tags or conditional tags, different ways of dealing with website workflow. Oh, awesome. So... Um, for the people that are going to be there, this is going to be awesome. This is more of a developer -y topic, or do you think it's more general? What's your opinion? I, I think it's, um, I'm, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, the idea when I started working on this presentation was to alleviate any fears that people have working with Gutenberg. Um, it does change the workflow. And, and like many of us, we spend, you know, 8, 10, 12 hours a day in the WordPress editor. It is literally our workplace, right? Mm -hmm. So if the WordPress editor doesn't reflect the front end of a website, that creates kind of a user interface, uh, user experience issue for us as, as em employees, so to speak. Um, it's where we almost live. So uh, I, I wanted to show that it is possible to, uh, to make it work better <laughs> for us as you. That's, that sounds so incredible. Um, talk about your journey into WordPress, because as a Kubrick, you know, someone that's familiar with Kubrick, that means you've been around in WordPress a while, or is it a little different journey in for you? It's funny, I never actually used the Kubrick theme myself. Um, I started using WordPress, playing around with it around 2009. And, and then in 2012, I decided to create a blog uh, up until that point, I was just doing uh, HTML in, in Dreamweaver. So I made a ton of mistakes on that little blog for that one, uh, that one project. And, and after that, learned how to use WordPress, uh, learned a little bit about WordPress development, a lot from, from using the default themes. And, and now today, I, I, I'm, I'm working out of college, managing a multi-site, which has something like 100 sub-sites. <laughs> it would make your head spin if you looked at the uh, directory tree on that uh, on that installation. Well, you know, you know, we really gonna we're really gonna have to talk about that because in my office, um, we're sort of going back and forth on the merits of multi-site because I feel like our entire uh, internal network and a lot of what we do should be in multi-site, but our lead developer has some issues. So during WordCamp, I'm definitely gonna pull you aside, pull you aside, and talk about it if you have a moment. Talk a little bit about your WordCamp experience. What, what do you like best about WordCamps or, or what, what makes you excited about participating? Well, uh, the first WordCamp I attended was in Los Angeles in 2014. I did not know that 
Oh, scratch that. It was Orange County in 2014. I didn't know what WordCamp was up until that point. And, you know, as the one WordPress developer at the college, I kind of felt isolated. So um, when I found out WordCamp was an actual thing, you know, a, uh, an inexpensive, high-value conference that uh, web de designers, developers, bloggers, whatever, can, can attend and, and share information, I was like, dude, I am so there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's just been, that was the early rewards. And then later on, as I learned more about WordPress from attending uh, WordCamps, um, I decided to give uh, try my hand at uh, speaking and sharing some of the knowledge. So, so I, I've gotten two very positive things out of attending WordCamps. Uh, it helps a lot with self confidence when you're standing in a room of a hundred other uh, designers and developers uh, trying to explain a WordPress multi site, mm. which was actually my That's first talk at. I, I at saw that at Riverside. Yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That was awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, so what have what kind of uh, hurdles have you had to? jump over in terms of being a speaker to well, where now you're a little more confident today and you're doing speaking a little more often. What's, what's that journey been like? It's honestly, it's just been the practice of doing it. Um, I've always been afraid of public speaking. I always have a lot of awkward pauses and ums. I don't so get that. I don't get that when I watch you. It's uh -huh. easier to do it on a, on a webcam, right? This is more of a, a personal conversation. But uh, when you're in a large audience, you're like, oh my gosh, everyone's staring at me and I got to get the, uh, what was that next thing I was going to say? So it helps uh, practice pacing and just alleviate any of the fears I've had with it. I don't have a lot of experience in it. You know what I like about your, following you is your entire process, you've been tweeting about it. You're like, hey, I'm working on my slides. This is some examples. So if you follow you someone like you you'll get a flavor of what you're going to talk about so that's pretty cool and that's why i'm so excited to have you on board um just so you know um i this whole word camp is sort of a part of my personal journey it's some one something that i feel strongly about and it's a lot of the people that i've met along the way in my last couple of years in the wordpress community and so it's so exciting that you're going to join us um to, to sort of change pace a little bit, why don't you leave us with something? Tell us about your dog that's been in the background. And actually, he or she has been incredibly well behaved at the beginning of the interview before we started. There was a lot of barking and, and now it's pretty quiet. Talk about your pet. Uh, she is a 15 year old Maltese poodle. So she's a little bit older and she's dealing with some uh, kidney issues, but she's amazing. and. Uh, and yeah, I, I think she decided to take a nap while I was talking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very appreciative to her. She thought that our neighbor's kids were at the door. Um, I mentioned this to you off camera that when uh, the Zoom client opens up for the conversation, it sounds like a doorbell. So I'm, I'm guessing the developers that work on this project probably mainly have cats. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. And I, and I mentioned during that time, too, that uh, the first person I interviewed in this series, uh, she's back in Minneapolis, and her cat just came in, and you know, she was more of a co-worker. Right. It was like, hey, what's going on in my space, and made herself known. So, you know, th these pets have a, a very vital role to people that are working out of home or do, take, doing a meeting online. So it was Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, so tell her I said hello, and tell her have a good weekend. So I, I will. <laughs> so thanks again for your time. It's going to be so exciting to have you up to Santa Clarita. Um, and we're so excited to, to see your presentation on Saturday. I, I can't wait. I'm, I'm very ready for it. And I hope it's well received. All right. From one Joe to another. See you next week. See you next All right. time. All right.